but that 88 is pulling away. Earnhardt, Johnson, Menard, Blaney, third generation star, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Brings him to the flag, checkered flag, waving, it's over, it's Earnhardt. Earnhardt trying to cover all spots. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Good job, Junebug! Dale Earnhardt Jr. Checkered flag at Talladega. Why is this one so much fun? Because your grin told so many stories on your cooldown lap. It's just real emotional. I haven't won here in a long time. It's my daddy's birthday a couple days ago. It's just real emotional, man. Uh, my ear thrilled. One more lap last week. One more lap. And I really feel that Dale Earnhardt Jr. would have been able to get past Jimmy Johnson. And, and no, I, look, I say that because he was running better than and faster than Jimmy Johnson most of the day. And he was in striking distance on that, what ended up being the last lap at Atlanta. It just really, I don't know, man, it just really felt like he would have had a shot. And especially since Dale Jr., notoriously, for as much as I'm a fan, obviously, but Dale Jr., notoriously, when we get down to um, restarts like that, or in this situation where we've got this new overtime, as they're calling it, or green white, you know, what used to be green white checker, right? You know, Dale Jr., unfortunately, doesn't usually fare well in those situations. I always cringe. Uh, at the end of a of a of a Dale Jr. race, when he's running decent, you know, say he's in the top, I don't know, like five, right? And that caution comes out. I I'm always kind of reluctant, going, oh, man. You know, on the one hand, I'd love Dale Jr. to have a shot to win it. On the other hand, I'm always worried because I feel like we're going to lose a heck of a lot more spots. And that was certainly much more of a concern in prior years when we didn't have this uh, elimination playoff system, when we were more concerned on on points. I was a lot more worried about situations like that. Or when we get into the chase where you start points racing again. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, Atlanta in today's My Nerd World. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Race Preview Podcast. Thanks for joining me again this week as we head to Las Vegas. Uh, struggling a little bit in practice. I'll uh, talk a little bit about that. Not much in terms of uh, merchandise or news for the week. So we'll just dive right into expectations, uh, qualifying, and uh, how the car is. And I'll give you my prediction of how I think Dale Earnhardt Jr. will run come uh, Sunday. Uh, first off, let's talk a little bit about Atlanta. And if you listened to uh, the Dirty Mill Radio Dale Jr. download or the new TJ Majors Door Bumper Clear podcast, you heard them break this down uh, and, and basically how that race um, played out. I, I watched the entire race, listened to the in car, uh, watched on my you know my television and on my app and on the on the race view, and it was really interesting this year though, or it is really interesting this year because. We're now hearing, and I don't know what, what the change is, but either they're talking more or we can hear it now, but we now hear TJ Majors and the crew chief, Greg Ives, on Channel 2 on the in-car. In previous years, we only heard Dale Jr. and TJ talk during the race, and now we can hear the conversation between uh, TJ Majors and Greg Ives, and I don't know if it's, I mean, on occasion, I guess we did, but not, certainly not in the frequency that we heard on, on Sunday. So it was fascinating to hear, you know, not only the in-car of Dale Jr. And, and TJ Majors, which really wasn't as much as what we normally hear just because the race went green for so many laps that there wasn't a lot of of chatter going on. It was clear that, uh, that TJ was letting Dale Jr. concentrate on the race, but when the race started, Dale Jr. was was you know was was fired out of a cannon. He was flying. He he was running the top in the first twenty laps or so, and it just was ripping through the field. I mean, he was ridiculously fast. It, it, I mean, he was running so fast, I was like worried about it because I you know tires were at a premium. The track is really worn out, and watching, I'm going, oh man, I don't know how he's going to be able to to maintain this. You know, at the same time. 
I'm thinking as a fan going, oh, man, is this one of these races where we've seen other drivers just go and dominate because the car is that fast? And, uh, you know, I was in that sense, I was excited. But at the same time, I was going, he's pushing it. And sure enough, he did. He pushed it too fast in those in those opening laps and wore the tires out and really played it conservative the, the, the rest of the race, which was to his benefit. You know, when we ended up with the second place finish, I think we were closing in on a, an at least a top five if the caution hadn't come out right there at the end. I, I, I do agree with, and Dale Jr. addressed this, and so I suppose one would default to the driver. He's in the car, right? I'm just the, you know, sofa crew chief. But he was way faster up on the up on the high line. And at one point during the race, Greg Ives and TJ were discussing as to why he wasn't going to the to the top of the track, why he wasn't running the high line. And he would for a couple laps and then he dropped back down and and I know Dale Jr. could see the lap times. We've talked about this in the first podcast of the season. With the new digital dashboard, he's able to actually see what those lap times are which is pretty cool. And so you've got less conversation going on with TJ because Dale Jr. can see the kind of lap times he's running. And I guess he probably was looking at the lap times when he went to the top and saw that they weren't running nearly as fast, even though visually it looked like he was running faster. But it was interesting to hear the conversation between Greg Ives and TJ because as a viewer at home, I was actually thinking the same thing right around the same time when they popped on the in-car and said, why isn't he running the top? And I'm like, yeah, why isn't he running the top? And it's funny because Dale Jr. addressed that on Twitter after the race last Sunday. Somebody had made a comment about the fact that TJ and Greg were talking quite a lot um, on Channel 2. And then Dale Jr. chimed in and he says, yeah, they like to talk about how they wish I would race or something like this. He joked about it. So he was apparently aware that they were having a conversation and and that they were sort of complaining, doing nothing with my fingers, not really complaining, but complaining uh, that Dale Jr. wasn't running the high line or where they or, or where they wanted him to to go. And TJ, I mean, TJ gets a lot of credit, um, certainly over the past couple of years and rightfully so for being one of the the best spotters in the sport. And he's, he's very clever in telling junior where he thinks he would be faster on the track without telling junior to run at that place on the track. It's really interesting to hear. And I'm sure, I'm sure Dale junior, you know, listens through the ruse of, (laughs) of what, um, of what TJ is saying, but TJ's he's he's incredibly clever of sort of making it known. Hey, man, if you run the high line, you're faster. And basically, he does that by when he goes and does that, he compliments him on how fast he's going. And you can hear Dale Jr. on occasion get annoyed, being like, "Yeah, man, but I can't run up there the whole time because the car is way too damn loose," or something to this effect. So, if you've never had the opportunity or just haven't sought out to listen to the in car audio. Uh, I, I would do so, man. It it, it really it, it enhances the race. I I watch every single race that way, and and um, I mean I spend most of the time looking at the app more than I do the the TV screen. I've actually made a decision this season to try to watch more of the TV coverage because I spend so much time just watching Dale Jr. log laps and looking at his lap times, and I realize I'm like, you know what? I want to watch a little bit more of the rest of the race and kind of get involved in the other drama that's taking place and not just singularly focused on on Jr. And I mean that from a standpoint of, you know, there's those lulls in the race where they are just logging laps and we're counting down to get to the end, in which case you have a better opportunity to get drawn into whatever the TV coverage is focusing on because there's not a whole lot going on with Dale Jr., right? I totally needed to, like, fix myself. Like, I totally explained that to you because I was thinking, well, I'm not sounding like a real junior fan. I didn't want that to come across that way, right? Uh, Normally, this is the portion of the podcast where, you know, I would go and talk about the merchandise available, but there really isn't anything new. I looked on NASCAR.com and DaleJr.com. All the items that we mentioned last week are the same items that are available uh, this week. I'll be going to Phoenix to watch the race uh, next weekend, and there were a couple things I was going to buy online, but I decided, you know what, I'll wait till we get to Phoenix next weekend. I'm sure they'll have new 
um, nationwide uh, paint scheme t-shirts there. I want to get at least another one of those and uh, maybe another Axalta um, uh, paint scheme t-shirt as well and a hat. When I went to – you totally don't care about this, but I'm going to tell you anyways. When I went to the race, uh, the, the, the last Phoenix race of the season, right, last year, I got this really awesome – uh, well, they, you know, actually, you didn't need to hear this because this is a cautionary tale. I got this really awesome uh, Diet Mountain Dew uh, hat for Dale Jr., right? Because I, I have a couple of old ones, but they're all faded. They're really old. And I'm like, I need a new Diet Mountain Dew, you know, baseball cap. So I got it, and I was all excited about it. <clears throat> I got it home. Yeah, it doesn't fit on my head. The one time I go and I buy a hat, because I rarely I have a lot of hats, but I don't buy them very often. I usually keep them for a number of years. The one time I go buy a hat, it's not a one size fits many. It was actually sized, you know, small, medium, large, and I actually got a got a small. I tried to give it to my nine year old Kyle, and because it, it fits on his head almost perfectly, but it's green, and his favorite color is blue. I miss that. I I, I miss when those things were like the biggest concerns you had in life, when it was just colors. You know, no, I don't want that. It's blue. I don't want the green. That's such a simpler, nicer time, right? All right, so no new merchandise news this week. Let's move over uh, to uh, Las Vegas. And again, we're going with a new this new low downforce package. And you know, last week proved me wrong. I was really worried about Dale Jr. in this package. He was praising it after the race. And that was good news. That was that was engine noise to my ears because he did not run good, as I mentioned last week. He did not run well with that low force uh, force down package. Those two races last year, I think it was a a ninth and the twenty third or something like this. And I just remember he was just struggling with it. I think one of the races was the Halo Guardians paint scheme, if I'm not mistaken. But he loved it, and he showed that he had speed and he could handle it, and so he was excited about it. Unfortunately, in Las Vegas, it's pretty clear they did not unload fast in the first practice. Well, they practiced all day Thursday, and I think he barely cracked the top 10 in 10 lab averages. But I, I, I kind of took that with a grain of salt because it was an extra day of practice. So I didn't really put a whole lot of emphasis or concern on that. I was more concerned with yesterday's practice sessions and today's practice sessions. So the one practice they had before qualifying, uh, he just was not he was not fast. I mean, I think his fastest single lap was 17th, and that was on a qualifying run. So it wasn't a huge shock when he qualified 20th for Sunday's race. And... The one takeaway from watching qualifying was the car was wicked fast uh, coming, well, wicked fast in turns one and two, but he's been losing the front in terms three and four. When you, when, when you watched qualifying on Friday, he was running pole, you know, pole time speeds until he hit turns three and four. And then he he just the the car just got out from under him, and it was pretty clear they'd been fighting it all weekend on Twitter, and uh, and during practice his comments were they just they were not getting anywhere in terms of the setup, and even on Twitter he said in practice one today because there were two practice sessions in in the first practice today he said the car had no speed. Now the good news is is that in final practice it looks like they may have made gains on it. He did have a single lap run, uh, and it was his first lap run of seventh fastest, which I'm pretty sure was actually faster than what he ran in qualifying. Now, again, I don't look at the speed chart because that's just one lap, and it's not indicative of how fast the car is over a, you know, over a full green flag run. However, the fact that he was able to go out and lay down a fast lap and being the first lap of practice was good news because it means they at least made adjustments on the car that made the the car faster just on the track on a you know on fresh tires and during practice when you follow what he was saying he he continued to complain about the way the car was uh was wasn't wasn't turning was too tight and going over the bumps but towards the end of practice he said that they had uh, made a lot of uh, gains on it and had made a lot of changes, and the car was a heck of a lot faster. So when you look at the 10-lap averages, it's not exciting. He was 19th um, on the on the 10 consecutive lap averages, and that was at the beginning of the session. 
I'm going to assume that he didn't do any 10-lap runs later on in the session. But when you look at some of the drivers that are faster in terms of well, let me let me let me back up. This 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 is how this is the formula I use. 